Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom. Today we're talking Need for Speed with Will. What's up, mm -hmm. man? Hey, Thanks for coming good through. to see you again. So we talked at E3. You showed off this game for the first time. For, to me, specifically, mm -hmm. I was flipping out about it because it's mm -hmm. cinematic and it's yeah. really awesome and arcadey and fun. But you got some new stuff to talk about today. That's right. Before we talked about Need for Speed, Payback being you know everything you love about Need for Speed, but then wrapped in a blockbuster action movie. Right. And now... We're talking about cops. The people that come to stop the fun. Cops are the yeah, they, they are enemy number one, right? Because you know you're racing around Fortune Valley. You know you're, you're doing all these you know sort of you know skirting the law, uh, doing a list of things. You're taking all these missions, right? Mm -hmm. You're helping out you know bank robbers get to safe houses. So and, and we've got this uh, you know, mysterious organization called the House, and you know they control all the casinos, the cops, and you know whenever that you upset the House, whenever a new character is upset the House, they're going to be sending cops after you. Doesn't, uh, going by like Vegas terms, doesn't the house always win? House does always win, but uh, maybe not now. Sweet. Right? Depends on you, right? So You're the uh, obviously hero. you had to bring the police into this because this was getting uh, out of control. To mm -hmm. be completely honest, I mean this is, this game is uh, you know it's both on the rails, off the rails. You're off roading, mm -hmm. you're stealing you're driving things everywhere in the new world. Yeah, and we talked to D3 about sort of like a bunch of the influences that have come into mm -hmm. this universe. You know, a lot of sort of like classic car movies, mm -hmm. a lot of modern action mm -hmm. movies. Where does the sort of police presence come in with all that? Yeah, so you know uh, there are all these races that happen, and then you know the, the, the house they're kind of upset about this. You know, they're they're rigging all these races, and you're upsetting the apple cart by winning these races. So of course they're going <laughs> to send cops after. You, right? It's the only logical conclusion. So we have these epic cop chases where they send all the city's cops after you. And they're sending cruisers, they're sending Corvette cops, they're sending rhinos that you know come head first at you. Oh my god. And they're all trying to box you in because when they box you in, they try to lock on this new weapon called the kill switch. And it's actually like this kind of sci-fi weapon that they, 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 they point at you and try to lock onto your ECU and immobilize you while you're rolling. And it sounds like science fiction, but it's yeah. actually a real thing. It's Wait, a this thing is, this out there in the world. This is based on real technology? It's based on real technology. I was going to say, you guys you. are taking like a lot of like really fun creative liberties here, but that's, that's a real thing. So how did, you, how, did you even, how did you find out about that stuff? Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet, right? Yeah. You're just but, like on the dark but, web, like researching. No, it, like it, 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 it's a thing that's out there. It's been proven, right? And, and, and so you know, we felt that that was the perfect weapon for our cops to go after our racers. And sure. so, so what they're doing is they're, they're trying to box you in, and you, they're locking onto your ECU. Your countermeasure is to engage with them, you, to shunt them, to wreck them, to take them out, to break that lock. Right? We don't just want you to outrun the Oof. cops, we want you to outbattle the cops. Yeah, you want to flip them over, explode their cars, all that fun mm -hmm. stuff. So what sort of tactics do you have with that? Is it sort of in the speed and angle you're smashing into them? I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. some of these things, like the big sort of the more truck-shaped things, are not going to be as easy to just push off yeah, the Yeah, the smart money is just to like you know keep ramming into them, keep rubbing against them, keep jostling with them, and then find those opportunities in the world, whether it's using traffic cars, it's using objects, it's using, you know, shortcuts to, uh, to, to shake these cops off. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is nuts. I think what I really like about this game is it just feels incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. um, it is need for speed. It's you know, in the right? title, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, how do you sort of maintain like that that that, that difference of, of like I have to focus on this race or I have to focus on this mission, mm -hmm. but also I want to keep this speed going as fast as possible. Did you find yourself going like we've actually made this game too fast and yeah, it's, it's mean, too it, quick to make it's it insane. actual decision? You know, we have some of the fastest production cars in the world in our game, and you know one of them in uh, this highway heist mission that we're looking at is the. Koenig's Egregarat. It's a $2 million hypercar. It's got like 1,500 horsepower and it is insane. And something that we, we like to do is we like to introduce you to multiple different vehicle types. Mm -hmm. And so there are missions like this, what we call our blockbuster missions, where you're not just driving one hot car, you're driving multiple cars. So you're driving this awesome Mustang GT 5.0 and then you're trying to steal this hypercar off this truck. So you feel the difference from like one awesome car to an even awesomer car. So this won't be one of those games where you pick a vehicle at the beginning and you ride it to the end. Like this, you're actually nudging players to try out an experiment with a whole bunch of oh, different... Oh, we want people to acquire a large stable of cars. What was that? <laughs> was that that's, a tire? Uh, that, that's one of our blockbuster moments. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there, there, there's stuff on this truck that explodes, of course, right? Yeah, and why not? I think that's like one of the great, I mean, you're making all these microcosmic, like tiny little decisions as you're mm -hmm. as tumbleweed, which usually goes by when something is boring, which is the opposite of what's happening yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, you're making all these tiny micro decisions on the fly, but then in the middle of all of that, you kind of stop to watch the chaos Yeah, because that, that's you being uh, an action movie hero in real time, right? We're doing an action movie in a game. Like, this is the stuff that before in movies, like, was just in movies. But now we're able to put you in these situations where you're battling with cars, you're wrecking them, you're doing crazy stunts, you're doing awesome drifts, you're linking all of these moments into your own action movie scene. 
I have a suggestion for a mode. Uh, you, in the corner, put a little dollar sign and then add all of the uh, actual price <laughs> damage that you're doing in, in just the average five-minute gameplay here. I'm not sure we can display numbers that big on the screen. <laughs> it <laughs> feels, like, a lot of it mayhem. feels like millions of There's dollars. It's a lot of mayhem, yeah. Uh, all, all in pursuit of stealing a, a $2 million car. So right. can you play as the police, if that's an option? Yeah, we, we kind of focus on uh, our characters, right? You know, they're on the right side of the law, and, you know, they're the ones who are, you know, under threat from the cops. Right? I thought the really law was on the right up. side of the law. Wow, the, the, these guys, you know, they, they're kind of good guys. They, you know, they, they sort of skirt against the boundaries of the law. Uh -huh. We like to call them badass, but not bad guys. Not bad guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> So, like the story mode, like it, does it weave into the multiplayer? Or how does how has all this come mm. together? We've uh, made a full-on single-player campaign playable awesome. offline, online. It's what our fans have been asking for. We love to listen to our fans, and so we've got this new story mode where you know all of the gameplay is intertwined with story. We've got a much more consistent uh, level of storytelling where you know we used to have FMV, right, mm -hmm. full-motion video cutscenes, but now all of that is, is in CG. So all the storytelling uh, happens while you're in the car. It happens in the world. It happens in uh, many locations in our world and at different times of day. So we, we're a lot more immersive with our uh, story this time, and, and it's enmeshed with you know, how we've structured the, the campaign. Yeah. You're trying to get from start to finish, you're trying to bring down the house at the end, but along the way, we let you make choices. So you're not, you know, you're going to play it way different from the way I play it when you uh, progress through the campaign. You're going to be presented with you know, a race or an off-road. Which, which would you pick first? Race yeah. off-road. I mean, I'll go with a race, yeah, I guess. Yeah, go with race. And yeah. then, you know, you've mastered that a bit, then you'll try some off-road, and then you'll be presented with other choices. Do you want to you know, pick drift or drag or off-road or take on a mission? Right, so people will play through the campaign in different ways. But it all comes back <sighs> to the characters collaborating on moments like this. You know, these major, major heists, these Which, blockbuster like, missions. I just, uh, I adore, I almost cursed because it's just so much fun. I adore how mm -hmm. seamless that was. Yeah. Like, you just pull up, you have this T2 truck sequence, the mm -hmm. back of the truck explodes, which, which make James Cameron very happy because he yeah. hates trucks. <laughs> a car flies out of it, and then you're racing, and now yeah. we've got a helicopter. It's a massive payoff, right? For yeah. getting to that goal, then we have a, a dynamic vehicle switch, and we have many of these uh, peppered throughout our blockbuster action missions. So you're, you're driving t as Tyler the Racer, switching to Jess the Wheelman, over to Mac, who's the showman. And, and, and you're really feeling these characters teaming up against these greater goals. Which is like when you think about racing games historically, you don't really think about characters. You don't mm -hmm. think about personalities driving them, you know, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was yeah, so <laughs> bad. But you have, you have these characters that come in to play with your story. So where does the sort of mm -hmm. influence for those come? Like, how yeah, did you guys well, develop what these? What we find, Brian, is that you know, not of all of our Need for Speed fans are car nuts or gearheads or car enthusiasts. So you know, we like to bring motivations that are more universal and more grand and more generally heroic. And so, you know, we're drawing on this long history of action movies and car chases and, you know, people you can relate to, right? Mm -hmm. We have an aspiring street racer and someone who, you know, um, you know, lives out the dream of, you know, taking the bank robbers to their safe house, right? These are things that people understand. And when we piece together these scenes, these motivations, these goals, we have our own sort of need for speed action movie. I like that that's one of your character's dreams. He's like, I just really want to grow up and take bank robbers to the <laughs> safe house. He like writes it in his yearbook and everything. <laughs> so like, I think what I really appreciate about this game is kind of how gorgeous it is. Can mm -hmm. you kind of talk about the sort of tech involved in this? Like, What, what can people expect yeah, on next-gen consoles? Need for Speed is powered by Frostbite. We have the power of that a engine that you know all of the might of uh, EA, all the biggest brains in the company contribute to this incredible uh, uh, game engine you know and part of it you're seeing you know how, how we have these enormous maps this uh, gorgeous open world the 24-hour time of day lighting right it's all real time right plus for the first time we have frostbite physics in the for speed it's our own physics engine which has enabled us to do more with our cars more with our customization and more ways to drive including off-roading and more ways to destroy the cars. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Which I think is You're one of my favorite parts. Best of this. car damage in the business, I think. Yeah. So how how is that even? I mean, how do you create something like that? Are you mocapping car accidents? Like, <laughs> do you have a, do you just like a a studio where you just keep smashing like a bunch of crash <laughs> test dummies in a wall? That is another dream of mine. But you know, thankfully <laughs> we we have uh, computers, right? We you know we we can simulate all of this stuff. We can have you know real time deformation of cars, and so you know the way that the car looks, uh, it looks that way because. You did it, right? right? It's your car. And it's your wreck, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's the way you interact yeah, and then with the way. we present it cinematically, right? In slow-mo and gorgeous camera angles and with that sound design of like being really in that moment. Sure. So can you kind of expect to see, you know, this car will get torn apart many, dozens of different ways? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the damage, like I said, is unique to what you do to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds so much fun. <laughs>
So uh, what are we looking at right now? Yeah, this so is this is uh, what we call our uh, BMW M5 race. You know, we've uh, you know been collaborating with uh, BMW for years. You know, BMW has always had hot cars in Need for Speed. You know, going all the way back to you know Most Wanted. There was that M M3 GTR that our, our fans know and love. It's become a racing game icon. And so th uh, this time around, we're introducing BMW introduced their all new BMW M5, their 2018 model in Need for Speed Payback. And then you're destroying it. And you're destroying it. You're, so this you're is doing like crazy things. You're racing in it. You're taking on missions. And this is Every time I talk to you, I'm more fascinated about this, that you get all of these car companies on the phone, and then they're mm -hmm. like, we have this brand new car. It's gorgeous. <laughs> We've been in R&D for years. We're ready to unveil it. And you're like, cool. We're going to tear it to pieces. Yeah, it's, I think it's because you know when, when, when our players play with these cars in Need for Speed, they just fall in love with them. And you know, the car manufacturers love that. They love that emotional connection to people living out their fantasies in their cars. Well, Will, thank you so much. Need for Speed looks mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to play this. Uh, when can people get their hands on it? November 10th. Awesome, awesome. Uh, for all things video games, right here at Gamescom, IGN got your back all week long, so stick around.